Good morning, church. God bless. I can't hear you. Good morning, church. Come on, we're in the house of the Lord. There should be a lot of joy in God's house this morning. Amen. Let's thank him for another day. What an absolute blessing to be in his house this morning. For our brothers and sisters at home, we miss you. We praise God for you. We don't know where you're at, but we praise God that we can be one with each other in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the fourth Sunday in our season of walking in the light of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Epiphany season. It's a wonderful time for us as a people of God to count our blessings. Jesus came and brought every blessing that we need in our lives. And there we have no more worries, no more concerns whatsoever. Even when this world tries to lay things on us, we can give it back. Because Christ has come as true God and true man. And he has called us his brothers and his sisters. Amen. Amen. Let's rise for our opening prayer on this fourth Sunday in our epiphany journey. Amen. We rise. Lord God, Heavenly Father, hear our prayers today as your sons and daughters. Amen. Holy Spirit, we're here on a divine mission to do great things, but we know that we need the spiritual food from your word. We need the, uh, the blessing of hearing the Holy Spirit speak through your word to capture our hearts and our minds so that we can be the best lighthouses we could be as we go into this world. Surround us now, Holy Spirit, as you come in the presence of our God, that we may be able to be shaped and molded in his image, that we may be able to take hold of the, of the gospel message, the mission of proclaiming the good news of the gospel wherever we would go in our lives. We open our hearts and our minds up today to be filled up for divine purposes. So as we leave the sanctuary, as we walk through the doors of St. Paul Evangelical Lutheran Church, we become the church that we're called to be in this world until you return, Lord Jesus. Guide us now, Holy Spirit. Free us, Holy Spirit. Shape us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, saints, this morning our opening hymn is We Are the Church. Now, we have not sang this song in a while, so stay with me. We're going to practice a little bit. Amen. You got your words there? We're going to practice a little bit our opening song. We may practice some others, too. We haven't sang this in a while, so we're going to practice singing the refrain. We'll sing the first verse together, and that way we have it, and then we'll come back, okay? And we'll sing the whole song, all right? It's been a while since we have sang this selection, and so we want to be sure we sing it, and it's all uh, in its pure vigor, because we realize that's who we are as a people of God. I, uh, we are the church. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church. You are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Okay, got it? Yes. All right. I want heaven to hear you, all right? Amen. This is our Pentecost season. Let the joy of the Lord flow through us. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church. 
you are the church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church together we're many kind of people with many kinds of faces all colors and all ages too from all times and places i am the church you are the church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church together Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's riding, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people receive the Holy Spirit and brought the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. I am the church. You are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Amen, amen. What a blessing for us as God's people. God created us for divine purposes, right? And we do his things together. But there are times throughout the day where this old world gets the best of us. Amen? And we have to remember the grace and the mercy of God that's so sufficient for us. It covers a multitude of our sins. Right? And we have to come before our gracious God, as we'll do just now, to let our God know we are thankful for sending his only begotten son into this dark world and rescuing us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. I invite us at this time to kneel or to sit for our time of confession and absolution as the people God printed in our worship folders for us this morning as God's people. My brothers and sisters and fellow saints, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We unite our hearts together before our gracious and merciful God. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have sinned against you in things we have done and left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. My brothers and sisters and my fellow saints, our God is always merciful and gracious to us. Amen? Amen. And he's always granting us forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and by his full authority, I therefore declare to you today the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. I am free. Amen. Amen. In that freedom, we go and serve the Lord. You may be seated, saints, as a people of God. Just a reflection on our prayers today. Uh, as a church family, um, we'll be grieving along with the Aflalo family uh, because God, as you can see in the special notation there, said to our sister Lois, who sat over there since the 60s, amen, well done, thy good and faithful servant, Edna Lois Aflalo, this past week. And we ask that we would keep the Aflalo family and our church family in prayer, especially that God would just give to the Aflalo family what they need for this time of preparation to celebrate a life lived in the Lord Baptized, I believe, at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. She fought the fight. She finished the race, and she has her crown. Let's praise God for that, for Sister Lois today. Amen? She achieved it all, and we all know that. Wherever you saw Lois, she was talking about Jesus, all right? And she wanted you to know Jesus loved you, and Jesus had a plan for your life. And so we also praise and thank God. Uh, for the opportunity we have then to be uh, ambassadors of the gospel. So we think about the homeless in our community, that God will continue to allow us to touch them in, in some way. We also want to think about, of course, the work that we do with all the other agencies and our foster care youth and our preschool, the things that God allows us to do in that situation to bless the people in our community, the least of us, those who need to know our Lord Jesus Christ as well, our veterans, we continue to remember them and our prayers and their needs as well as God's people. And we praise and thank God for that. We also will be lifting up those who are celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversary celebrations uh, in this month of January. There are a lot of birthdays, but a special birthday today is our uh, Sister Jackie Craddock uh, celebrates a birthday today with our church. Jackie, we're so proud to be able to celebrate your birthday with you today in church. What a joy. And as God's people to celebrate that, and others who have January birthdays as well, we thank God for that. Uh, we also want to remember our other sick and shut-in members. Uh, we continue to remember uh, Sister Mitzi Johnson. Uh, remember um, as well Sister Melba Cannon. Uh, we also want to keep in mind uh, Francine's mother and father in prayer, all right? Stepfather, but father in prayer. Amen. To God be the glory. Uh, both of them in need of care, both of them being cared for in some kind of way. We remember that as well as God's people. Um, we also remember this morning uh, uh, Arvin. Uh, what's his name? Um, his name was slipping away from me. Um, but we'll come back to him. Help me out, Brother Ray. Um, Alvin Mears. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Alvin Mears. Let's keep him in our prayers as well as God's people. Other special prayer requests this morning. We continue to remember Buki's family and the death in her family. We ask God's blessing and peace be upon her. Other special prayers? Hmm? The funeral for Buki's brother is this coming Friday in Nigeria. Okay, so keep them in prayer, if you would. All right? Other special prayer requests this morning. We pray for the country of Haiti. We pray for the Kessa family, specifically in the country of Haiti. We pray for doors to be opened and for peace to be in the land. All right. Yes, Brother Reno. We pray for Brother Reno and we pray for his family. We pray for his life and his transition here in Los Angeles. Amen. We praise and thank he's going to be playing the bass for us in worship this morning. We thank God for that as he uses his talents in worship with us this morning as well. All right. Other special prayer requests? Sister Stacy. 
for one of your students. Name is Kevin. Okay. One of Sister Stacy's students, Kevin Hartstop. They had to resuscitate him, right, and take him to the hospital, all right? We pray for her classroom as well, a special needs classroom, the impact that would have on them to see their classmate in that situation. And they miss him already a lot. Amen. To God be the glory. Also, we pray for, the, for our Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school will be starting again, and Sister Stacy is working on that with Pastor Enoch. She has a couple of volunteers that are willing to work with her. I heard another volunteer say yes this morning. So we praise and thank God for the prayers being answered. Other special prayer requests this morning, saints? Anyone? Okay, we pray for Brother Reza as he's transitioning into this United States culture, and that God will continue to bless him as he makes this transition as well. All right. Yes, Brother Max, pray for Max's dad. Okay, we pray for Max's dad, who may need surgery on his eyes, all right? To God be the glory, yes. Okay, and who, who had surgery? Your brother had surgery in his back. We lift him up and put him before the Lord for healing. Special prayers, brother. Okay, we pray for her lupus and the healing that goes with that, that God is able. Amen? Walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? We pray uh, that God will just bless us as we worship him. The Lord be with you. We pray this morning. Okay, I'm sorry. Sister Tammy, you had a prayer? Okay, all right. We pray for the accident that happened on Monday. He's fine, but the car is not, but he's good. To God be the glory. Praise God over that. No tragedy. We pray, saints. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we just come this morning or this beautiful day you've given to us, Lord. And we just thank you that you woke us up first, Father, and that you did not call us out of this life and the sleep of death, but you said, Lord, sons, daughters, I want you to move and to do great things. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we're all here together as your church. Lord, we bring before you this morning, Lord, the prayers, the petitions, the concerns that are on our hearts and our minds, because we realize, Lord God, that as your sons and daughters, we can talk to you 24 hours, seven days a week. We can lay all of our concerns, all of our praises, all those things that burden us, Lord God, on you and leave them there and know that you hear us and that you're going to answer us. And Lord God, this morning, we just bring before you Lord God, the comfort and assurance that we know you're already providing, Lord God, for the Aflalo family. Uh, for Lord, you don't make mistakes. You allow Sister Lois to, to be here for 96 years for a reason, Lord God, and to, she can carry out her earthly responsibilities. Lord, you've given her crown, but we know that there still needs to be a peace and a comfort, Lord God, upon this family. Uh, Lord, we also pray for those who have said that they need healing, uh, those that uh, who are sick or shut in or those that are still sheltering in place, Lord God, who need healing in their life. Like we think about our, uh, our dear sister Jean Bradford, Lord God, who called or texted in for prayer as well. Lord, we just ask that you would just cover everyone, Lord God, who in their needs and the power of their relationship with you, their baptismal faith would carry them, regardless of what it may be, Father. We know that this body was created by you for divine purposes, Lord God. We pray for healing and strength and peace. Lord, in thy mercy. Heal our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the outreach ministries of our congregation, our food pantry, our preschool, our outreach to veterans in the community, Lord God. Uh, we pray, Lord, for the homeless people that we're able to touch in our community, Lord God. Uh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you allow us to be this beacon of light on this corner uh, for 99 years, Lord God. We rejoice that you've given us so much to be able to do in your name and the power and the abilities to do it in. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, Lord God, with our brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversary celebrations, Lord God, in this month of January. Lord, we thank you that they are our brothers and sisters, that they're on a, a mission with us, that you have blessed them immensely, Lord God. And as they celebrate this milestone in their lives, surround them, bless them, and encourage them, Lord God, to continue fighting the good fight of faith and bringing the good news of the gospel wherever they go and give you the glory and the honor and the praise through it all. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up 
all these wars that are taking place and all this turmoil that's taking place in our world. We pray for our world leaders, Lord God, that they would come together with resolve that would honor and glorify you, our creator. Lord, we pray for peace throughout Europe. We pray for pre peace throughout um, the Caribbean and especially in Haiti. We pray for peace on the streets uh, of our city, Lord God, where there's so much chaos. God, we ask your Holy Spirit to move in powerful ways to bring your people to honor and to glorify you and not themselves. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, today we pray for traveling mercies. For those that are traveling in this season, Lord God, that you will watch over them, lead God, direct them, let them arrive safely, Lord, to their destinations and re return home safely. We especially lift up uh, our brother Michael Norfleet uh, as he is on the Soul Train cruise, Lord God, with the temptations. He texts in requests for prayer that they be able to testify to all those individuals that are on uh, the cruise ship, Lord God, and to let them know uh, what keeps them going and is that their faith in Jesus wherever they're at. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, today, uh, as we... Uh, continue to see the things you're doing in our lives. We just ask, Lord God, that you would just pour in us all that we need through your word, uh, through your body and your blood, through the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to continue, Lord God, to, to, to reach out to those around us, whether it's someone in our family who needs to be touched, someone in our community that needs to be touched, some stranger along the way, Lord God, let us truly be you in this world today and never forget the power that you passed on to us as your sons and your daughters. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Let's praise God for just knowing he's already answered. Amen? He has already answered. He has already answered our prayers as his sons and his daughters. As we continue with our worship this morning, saints, just a couple of things to let you know. Oh, it's going to happen as we go into the Word today. Uh, Pastor Enoch is going to be reading our scripture lessons for us today. And so Pastor Enoch will read Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, verses 15 through 20, found on page uh, 302 in your pew Bibles. Amen. And then after that, God has blessed us with our sister from our daughter congregation, St. Phil Lutheran Church in Compton. Uh, sister Gina has a text over. She says, I'm going to come and bless my my family over at St. Paul today, and I said, well, come on over, sister. She's going to bless us with a selection after we hear our Old Testament lesson. Um, and then after that, Pastor Enoch will continue with our second lesson, which is taken from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 to 13, found on page 1778 or 1780 in our Pew Bibles. And then our brother Joe Kennedy is going to bless us with a wonderful selection with the, the gifts God has given him. And then Pastor Enoch will read for us our gospel text. Our gospel text is found in the gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through verse 28. And it's going to be found on page 1552 or then page 1556 in your pew Bibles. All right. So, so our visitors and guests, the lessons are there for you and the page numbers are there for you to be able to find along the way as we're in the word of God together. The word is a light for our paths. Amen. Amen. And we need his light to guide us today. And now may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the carrying out of his holy divine word. And the church said amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Our first reading, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Let me know when you're there by saying amen. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for, he, for this is what you ask of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, 
nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. Verse 20. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely, she longs for heaven and home. Since Jesus is my portion, a constant friend. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. I sing because I'm happy. I, I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. I sing because I'm happy. Hallelujah. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I Thank you, sister. Our second reading is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. In your pew Bible, it will be in page 1778 or 1780. Let me know when you're there by saying amen. Now about food sacrifice to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. 
Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having sin, having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way, and want their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Joe and our Ronaldo, Brother Ronaldo. Now we rise 
for the gospel lesson this morning. Our gospel lesson is coming from uh, the good news according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. In a pure Bible, uh, the pages are 1552 or 1556. Let me know when you're there by saying amen. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. So the people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority? He even gives others to impure spirit and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. We remain standing as we sing, What Child Is This? We continue in this wonderful, glorious season of Epiphany, where we join the world at the manger of our Lord Jesus Christ, praising and thanking God for sending His only begotten Son into this dark world. What child is this who lay to rest on me? sleeping whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds God and angels sing this is Christ Son of Mary, while lies he in such mean estate, where oxen as are feeding, good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. Shall pierce him through the cross, be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant Salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise a song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy for Christ is born, the babe, the son of men. Now we confess our faith in the um, 
in the ninth sin queen, and this confession is fourfold for us this morning. First is to glorify our Father in heaven. The second is to have a better understanding of the object of our faith. The third is to be able to express our faith to others. And the fourth is to know what we are testifying to as we verbalize our faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God from God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophet. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. This is my confession. And I'm sorry. The peace of the Lord be with you. Together we share this peace around with everyone around us. We share the peace of God. Peace of the Lord be with you. Saints, as we remain standing, our sermon hymn, I think we may know it, but I want to practice it. Amen? We have a lot of people here today who may not know this song. It's actually printed for us in our worship folders. And we're going to practice one verse. All right, Furman? Is that good? All right. We'll practice one verse, and then we'll be able to get the tune and be able to sing it together with a lot of joy and praise on this uh, fourth Sunday in our Epiphany journey, the season of light. Try verse 1. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. Okay, so you got that down? When you get to verse 2, there's a little bit of a typo there, so take out that first line, all right? All right, we had a little run over, amen? I think we got it. Let's sing it now all together. one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that our unity may one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love May they know we are Christians by our love. We will work. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we 
are Christians by our love, by our love, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And they know we are Christians by our love. Tell your neighbor, tap into your power. Tell them again, tap into your power. Let's pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word continues to be a light for our paths. And we praise and thank you, Lord God, today your word has given us insight, Lord God, to the power you gave to Moses, Lord God, the power you gave to the Apostle Paul, the power you gave to the New Testament church 2,024 years ago, the power that came from on high in Jesus Christ, that he was able to cast out even evil in those that had Satan in their bodies. Lord, we thank you today that you passed all that power and authority onto us as your church here on earth. May we not forget who you are and who we are and what you equipped us to do from on high, that you're with us every waking hour and even when we sleep so that your mission may be accomplished until you return. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guide us now as we tap into the power that is given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Amen. You may be seated, saints. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior and our King Jesus Christ who comes to us as true God and true man and also from the Holy Spirit who today is truly here to shape us and to mold us and to prepare us each and every day to share the good news of the gospel. Amen? We're here to tap into our power and do the work of Jesus Christ. Saints, I know as you were listening uh, to Pastor Enoch, as he was then reading our Old Testament lesson from the book of Deuteronomy, you were able to connect and understand that God had given Moses' ability to use his power to speak to his people by his authority. And so Moses does so. And we go back to verse 17. And the Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will rise up, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. And I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. And you said, wow. All power and authority was given from heaven high to Moses, and Moses had the power to do what God had called him to do. He plugged into his power source. Amen? And then the Apostle Paul, as he's trying to train the New Testament church to put away their old thinking about sacrifices, because as we well know, it was important that you would bring your sacrifice into the temple, 
give it to the temple priest. The temple priest would go behind the curtain of the Holy of Holies. He would take your sacrifice, your best sacrifice, sacrifice behind the curtain, and then your sins would be forgiven because you were being obedient to God for bringing your blessing to the altar to be sacrificed so that God will continue to bless you. So Paul is struggling with the New Testament church at Corinth because some people still just don't get it. You know, you know some people like that? They still just don't get it. Even though God is telling them, you're telling them, they still don't get it. So the apostle Paul says, I want to make it very clear. You can continue to bring your sacrifices if you desire, but understand, let's not make that a stumbling block to the rest of the New Testament church and the responsibilities that Jesus Christ gave to the church as he ascended to the Father's right side. That's why he says in verse 9 to the church, be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Church, say amen. And then our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in an attempt to train the disciples to show them where, that he has all power and authority, all right, is there to, to show them how they're going to use that same power that, that he has from on high. And as he passed that power on to them, as he ascends to the Father's right side, because every day of their three-year journey with Jesus, he was telling them, I'm going to be leaving you. So you better get this point. You better hold on to this lesson. Understand I'm giving you something that you're going to need because I'm going back home. Amen? In verse 27, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with authority, he even gives orders to the impure spirits, and they obey him. News about Jesus spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Our text for today, saints. My brothers and sisters, the New Testament church has areas that we need to review. We, we need to just review them. We need to realign something in the New Testament church, not just the church 2,024 years ago when Jesus ascended and then left us responsibilities, but those of us who are living today in 2024. We need to realign our morals, our values, and our ethics to line up with the morals, values, and ethics of the kingdom of heaven. We need to assess some things. We need to assess the way in which we are using our spiritual gifts and talents in this world and to be sure that we're using our spiritual gifts and talents given to us by God, amen, that we're using them to carry out kingdom business. We have one purpose. Tell your neighbor we have one purpose. We're here to do kingdom business, all right? And then we need to renew some things in our lives, like we did on uh, the first Sunday in December when we started the new church year. We, we, we renewed our commitment to the Lord as we started the Advent season, right? And then when we were uh, at home alone or with other people, we renewed our commitment to live a joyful life when we turn into a new calendar year on January the 1st or December 31st, right? Uh, those priorities that we made then and now, we need to align them so they really are walking in the footsteps of Jesus, and not in the footsteps of this world, not in our own thinking, not in our own doing, but they really truly align with the footsteps of Jesus, right? You know that question, WWJD, what would Jesus do, right? That's what we need to be asking ourselves on this journey. And then finally, we need to reorganize. Reorganize some things in our personal lives, right? Uh, and examine them in such a way that the Word of God gets back in His rightful place. The Word of God should be where, saints? Oh, come on, talk to me. We're at St. Paul. Where should the Word of God be in our lives? First and foremost, right? First and foremost, right? And then prayer in our lives should be right there coupled with that as the people of God, right? that we fully understand who we are as the people of God. We are people in the Word, we are people of prayer, and we are people who are on a mission to do the work of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This uh, epiphany season, four weeks into it, church, has been a glorious season for us. 
We've been praising and thanking God in this wonderful season, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, praising and thanking God the Father for the gift his son, of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? True God and true man. We've been standing in awe. We've had joy wrapped all around us because we have a sigh of relief. Lord, I don't have to worry about a thing. It's going to be all right. Jesus made it all right for us. Amen? And, and we've been in this season of gratitude and, and we really a sincerity because all worry is gone. All pain is gone. All suffering is gone because all power and authority has been given to us through Jesus Christ. So we don't have to worry about the things. Even when we go through some things, even when we're, we're mourning, even when we have hurt and pain, even had these things going on, we know that we can put them all back on the cross and leave them there. Because we know everything happened at the cross when Jesus said, it is, finish it, finished, right? In this season as well, we've, we've gotten a lot of insight and a lot of wisdom from God's word as we were then praising and thanking God and acknowledging the fact that we're here. And we know then that we are secure while we're on earth and we are secure, amen, as we make our way to heaven, right? And we like security. Tell your neighbor, I like security, Okay, that's secure. We are secure, church, in understanding on earth and in heaven, we're good to go. When I got to the Aflalo's house this past week and walked into the room where Sister Aflalo was lying there, and she just literally was asleep in the Lord. She lived her life in the Lord. And so, therefore, she just said, Lord, here am I, take me. And she was asleep in this world, but she was awake in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Secure in understanding her relationship with the Lord. Today, saints, on this fourth Sunday in Epiphany, we see ourselves in all of our texts today. We see ourselves as Moses. We should. God has passed on authority for us to talk to people about his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We should see ourselves as individuals who can release people from sin and from death and from the devil. We can release people. That's what Moses did, right? We should see ourselves as the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said, look now, we all watched Jesus ascend to the Father's right side. We all heard with with our ears and we saw with our eyes, right? Jesus tells us very clearly, now don't stand around here. There is something I have commanded you, not suggested, not recommended you to do. Now go and do it. We're like the Apostle Paul in the New Testament church. 2024 later, we're telling the church the same message. We're engaging people and encouraging them to tap into their power source, tap into their spiritual gifts, tap into the abilities that God gave them in order to save this world from the gates of hell. And hell is still a very real place. Don't fool yourself. Amen? We're like the Apostle Paul in so many different ways. Paul had issues, he had problems, he had aches, he was pains, but he never stopped talking about Jesus. Even while he was in jail, in chain, he still was able to save those uh, who were incarcerating him there in prison, talking about the Lord. Amen? And of course, as God's people, we see that Jesus is demonstrating to us in our text today the power of God that he came to set us free, amen, and to to take off the chains that would bind us in this world so that we can truly live a life of freedom. What does all this mean for us as the New Testament church in 2024? It means it's time for us to adhere to the plans of God over everything else in this world, amen? Amen. Just adhere to the plans of God over everything else in this world. It it, it means that we, as the people of God, turn ourselves over to him morning, noon, and night, and we seek his will and not our own, right? It, It means that we remember that heaven and earth are on our side, church. Whether we're on the earth or we're on the way to heaven, we know that we're good to go, amen? And that we recognize that This is a frail life that we live. We have a frail existence that we're on. But in the Lord, we are fully taken care of 100%. And finally, saints, it's important we realize submitting to God's will in our lives, like Moses, like like the Apostle Paul, like Jesus submitting to the Father, 
All we have to do when we wake up in the morning, say, yes, Lord, speak to me, right? In the middle of the day, say, yes, Lord, I'm listening. In the middle of the day when things get a little crazy, yes, Lord, I hear you. And guess what, Lord, I need a little something from you. Amen? We, we, we are willing to then follow the word of the Lord. So as children, regardless if a child is a, is a baby or, or a one-year-old or two-year-old, that child should be calling on God. Amen? And, and if, we, if a child is able to make it to being a teenager, certainly in your teen years you need Jesus. Amen? They need to be calling on the Lord. Lord, guide me. Keep me away from the darkness of this world, right? For the young adults in this world trying to find our way or find your way, Lord, what career will I have? How will I use my gifts and talents? Who can I trust to guide me in my life, right? We call on God, amen? For those adults around us, we know that God has blessed you. We use all that we have. We still call on God to to show us how to use what we have the right way as God's people. And for the seniors that are are calling on God, and there are no seniors at St. Paul today, so I don't have to worry about that. But the seniors still need to call on the Lord. I remember Sister Flalo sitting right there calling on the name of Jesus, amen, praising and thanking God, rejoicing in the fact that she was in God's house, praising and thanking him for his body and for his blood, praising and thanking him she was a baptized child of God, a great role model for us that we can call on God, plug into our power source, and transform the world around us, starting at home starting at home, starting with your neighbors, the communities in which we live, in our workplace. Sister Stacy wants to pray for her young people in her classroom every Sunday in our workplace, in our relationships around us. All of our relationships around us don't know the Lord Jesus Christ or they're straddling the fence. We are called to be fishers of souls. Amen? Fishers of souls. None of this, saints, is going to occur unless we're willing to follow the light of Christ 24 hours, seven days a week, without an excuse. I'm going to say that again. None of these things will happen. Calling on God, following him is going to happen unless we follow God without an excuse. And we put the word of God first. First. My word shall not return void. Put the word of God first. Prayer is our lifeline. Tell your neighbor, prayer is our lifeline. It's a lifeline. It connects us all the way to heaven. It's never busy. It never drops. Amen? You don't have to worry about it. We can open our mind, our hearts to God any time of day or night, and not only does he hear us, he assures us that he's going to take care of it. Amen? He hears and answers us. And then finally, we use our gifts, as we said earlier, to do kingdom business. Saints, in about three weeks, we're going to make a major turn. It's a major turn in about three weeks. We're going to Move from the Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany season. We're going to put all of the thoughts of the joy and the celebration of Jesus as Emmanuel coming into this world, giving us life and joy and peace and guiding us as our light. We're going to take a major turn toward Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday this year happens to be on Valentine's Day as we celebrate in the United States. What a wonderful message. The ultimate love sacrifice, Jesus Christ who loves us unconditionally, who the Father, he loved the Father, and the Father loved them unconditionally. They would come into this world. And we're going to take this 40-day walk journey to Calvary with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not going to be celebration and parties. It's not going to be the eating and the joyful time. It's going to be painful. It's going to be sorrow. We're going to have to hear some things, read some things, and experience some things in the Word of God that we are going to simply be overwhelmed by. And we're going to walk through Lent together until we get to Holy Week. And in Holy Week, we'll have Palm Sunday and we'll be shouting. Amen? 
with palm branches in our hands. We'll come to Monday, Thursday, and we'll go to the upper room with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before he goes to the cross. And he will then bless the disciples by washing their feet. He'll bless the disciples and institute the Lord's Supper in the upper room on Monday, Thursday. And then we'll get to Holy to Good Friday, a dark Friday. And those final acts, from a human perspective, will happen to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he hangs on the cross. He takes his last breath, and he says, and he says, and he says, it is finished. And then we will know, when we wake up on Holy Saturday, that Jesus went to hell for us. So we'll never have to experience the gates of hell as the children of God. And he descends into hell for three days, and, and then when we wake up on Victory Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning, we're going to have a shout for this world. A shout that we'll share with our family members and friends because we have the assurance that we will live forever and ever and ever because of Jesus resurrection from the grave. Let's begin to prepare our heart for this major turn in our Christian journeys and lives as we get ready for Ash Wednesday, February the 14th. May the light of Christ guide us, saints, as it did in Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, the Word of God remaining first, keeping prayer as our lifeline. Amen? Using our gifts and abilities to do kingdom business. Kingdom business, right? And then allow the Holy Spirit to show us how important our gifts and talents, talents are as we do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're on this mission together, amen? Tell your neighbor again, tap into your power source. Tap into your power source. We're on a mission to do the work of Jesus Christ. Amen? Pray with me this morning, saints. Sweet Holy Spirit, we are so grateful and thankful that along this journey of life, you have certainly been here with us. Through the ups and the downs, through the pains, through the trials and tribulations, through the questions and the doubts, but you've allowed us to experience God's word in new and different ways every time we hear it to give us the assurance beyond a shadow of a doubt that God says, I will never leave you and never forsake you, that my word should not return void. Bless us, Holy Spirit, as we continue to do what God has called us to do with the time, talents, and treasures that have been given to us. Renew us, Holy Spirit, so that we're truly, truly walking a life of praise and thanksgiving and conviction, not letting the troubles of this world get in the way of our praise and our thanks for the salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. Guide us, Holy Spirit, to Ash Wednesday, where our journey will truly be a transformative journey of life and liberty. Make this so. In the powerful name of Emmanuel, and the saints of God said, Amen.
Ronaldo was coming to worship and sitting there next to uh, Furman for several weeks, and I kept asking him, when are you going to bring your, your buddy with you to worship? All right? He came one time and played one song and came back the next time and didn't bring his friend with him. I said, well, Ronaldo, you can't come to church without your friend. <laughs> Amen. So we praise and thank God that Ronaldo is willing to serve and worship this morning and play with uh, Furman and pray also with Joe. Let's thank God again for them. That's absolutely a blessing. Absolutely a blessing for us. A way of using your gifts and talents that God has blessed us with for divine purposes, right? Uh, as we, when we get to this part of our service as a people, God is our opportunity to say thank you. Can you say thank you? Thank you, Lord, for giving me time to do your work. Thank you, Lord, for giving me special gifts and abilities and talents, Lord, to do your work. Thank you, Lord, for giving me financial blessings, Lord. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a portion of those blessings back to carry out your work until you call me home. Until I hear from you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Give thanks. Give thanks. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. We rejoice as we rise as a people of God that we may be obedient to His holy, divine, and errant word and return a portion of the blessings of time, talents, and treasures to do his work until he returns. We sing together, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank want to thank you Lord oh you've been so good you've been so good you've been so good you've been so good I just want to thank you Lord almighty loving gracious, merciful, and awesome Father. Our gratitude and praise we bring before your altar today as your sons and your daughters. We ask, Lord God, that you receive our desire to walk in your will and receive back from us a portion of our time, talents, and treasures to do your work. Surround us, Holy Spirit, so that we may tell others of the good news of the gospel all the days of our life. Thank you for allowing us to be lighthouses in this world wherever we go. And the saints of God said, amen, amen. and amen. For our visitors and for our guests that are here today, as we uh, come to this part of our worship service, um, we sing a hymn of preparation and a hymn of praise. And you have to turn to the front of your hymnals, not the hymns in the back, but the page numbers in the front. And you go to page 30 in the front of your hymnal, you'll find the, 
the hymn or the words, this is the feast. All right, this is the feast. St. Paul, if you see someone that can't get there, help them out. Don't let them stand there looking around. Amen? Just help them out. Give them a book. This is the feast. So the person's able to join us in preparing their hearts and their minds to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and that I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. And I'm doing that by giving you my body and my blood to strengthen you, to empower you, to engage you, to be sure that you never have to worry a doubt that I know your name. This is the feast. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and blessing, and glory are His. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God, and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God, alleluia. Saints, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper when giving thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Saints, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Sister Gina is going to come up at this time and bless us. Thank you, Sister Gina, again for a person, a person of God that you are. You're going to go there. And um, then we'll have Brother Joe bless us as well. And Brother Firmer will bless us with some communion music this time as well. We praise and thank God for them being with us today and surrounding us. Amen. Welcome, saints, to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is the true body Number four. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all your sins. Take and eat the true body of our King and our Savior Jesus Christ, who died that give you life and life to the full. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, victorious King Jesus Christ, who died that you may have life and have it to the full. Take and eat the body of Christ for you, brother. Take and eat. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, victorious King Jesus Christ, Strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and allow the light of Christ to shine through you wherever you go. Amen. You find more and more pain. Don't let your tomorrow be like yesterday. Cause I spoke to God, I called out your name, and on your behalf, I 
Take my Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and safe and victorious King Jesus Christ, who died on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. The true body of our King and Savior Jesus Christ in you. Take and eat. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and safe, victorious King Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take any, the body of Christ for you. My brothers and sisters and fellow saints, now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace as you allow the light of Christ to shine through you wherever you go. In his name, amen. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins take any the body of Christ for you take any now may this true body and blood of our Lord and safe victorious King Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace as you allow the light of Christ to shine through you wherever you go. In Jesus' name, amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and safe victorious King Jesus Christ who died on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of the Lamb who shed his blood on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, victorious King Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace as you allow the light of Christ to shine through you wherever you go. In his name, amen.
Saints, we rise for the blessing of the Lord. relationship with God the Father who created us, our relationship with God the Son who saved us from sin, death, and the devil, and our relationship with the Holy Spirit who is here today, present in us and around us, leading, guiding, and directing us, we celebrate as we sing together the words of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Saints, our closing hymn is also printed for us in our worship folders this morning or this afternoon. Take my life, O Lord, renew. It's been a little while since we've sang this song as well and may be new to others. So we're going to practice a little bit again, right? We're going to practice a little bit. We're going to sing verse 1 and be sure you got the tune down. And um, Miss Mateo, you know this selection? You know that selection? Okay, all right. But we're going to practice a little bit. She said, oh, Pastor, leave me alone. Amen. But I think we can do it. I think once you get the tune, it's a beautiful psalm, and it goes well with our text for today and with the message that God has given us today as we go out into this world this week under the grace and mercy of God's umbrella. We'll sing verse 1. The whole, we're going to play it all the way through. Play it all. Consecrate my heart to you. Take my moments and my days. Let them sing your ceaseless praise. Okay, we got it? Okay. Take my life, O oh Lord, renew. Consecrate my heart to you. Take my moments and my days. Let them sing your ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them do work. 
works that show my love for you. Take my feet and lead their way. Never let them go astray. Take my voice and let me sing praises to my Savior King. Take my lips and keep them true, filled with messages from you. Take my silver and my gold, all is yours a thousandfold. Take my intellect and use every power as you shall choose. Make my will your holy shrine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is your own, it shall be your royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour At your feet the treasure store Take myself, Lord, let me be Yours alone 